So, for the next few minutes, they searched the library. But instead of hard-covered books, the cubby holes were filled with old-fashioned scrolls. The scrolls contained plenty of subjects, like Alexander the Great, Cleopatra surrendering to Rome, the plagues of Egypt, but so far, nothing seemed helpful. Then Carter said, Hey Sadie, look at this one! The scroll he picked up was nothing more than a picture filled with colorful people. One large blue lady was arching over five smaller people, as if trying to protect them. Sadie took a long look at the smaller people. There was a man with green skin and wearing a hat shaped like a bowling pin. Then there was a pretty woman with dark hair and multicolored wings. Next to her was a man with a bird's head. Sadie couldn't decide on what the red-skinned man's animal head was. A dog? An anteater? An evil bunny rabbit? And then the fifth one was a woman in a blue dress. Then there was also a larger man below them, and his body seemed to be made of dirt and plant life. Sadie, this is it! Carter exclaimed. The five gods! Remember when the red man said Dad released all five? These are them! The five children of Nut and Geb! Look, the one at the bottom is Geb, their father, the earth god, and then this blue lady is the mom, Nut, the goddess of the sky. A goddess named Nut? Sadie giggled. What was her last name? Case? Very funny, Carter said. Anyway, these smaller gods are their children. The green one's Osiris, the god of the Egyptian afterlife. The winged lady is Isis, the goddess of magic. The bird man is Horus, the god of revenge. The red one is Set, the god of evil. He's like the main villain of Egyptian mythology. I don't think it's a coincidence that Set is red and the guy who sent Dad away is red. If he's that same god, we may be in bigger trouble than we thought. And the lady in blue is... Uh... Nephis. Yeah, the goddess of rivers. I always forget that one. And how does this help us? Sadie asked. Remember how we were suggesting earlier that Dad was trying to bring Mom back from the dead? Well, could it be a coincidence that Dad tried to specifically summon Osiris, the actual god of the dead, last night? And remember what Amos said about the House of Life making it their job to imprison gods? Dad obviously tried to free Osiris, but what he may not have realized was that he released all five of these gods. Still sounds too good to be true, that it could be a way to bring Mum back, Sadie said. Yeah, maybe, Carter said, but there's still something else that bugs me. Something about how Dad told the Red Man they'll stop you before the demon days. What's that? Sadie asked. Well, it's just a story, Carter said, but it tells people why there are 365 days in a year. You see, once... The Sun King, Ra, had like a vision that Nut and Geb would have a child who would overpower him. To keep that from happening, Ra used his godly power to prevent her from giving birth to a single baby any day of the year forever, even though she was kind of already pregnant with five babies at once. So, they went to find help from the moon god, Hansu, who offered them a chance to gamble moonlight. They want enough moonlight for five extra days in a year. So, Nut gave birth to one child each day for the next five days. And they say that's why there are now 365 days in a year. So, what you're saying is, Sadie asked, I'm saying those extra five days are the last days of the year, and if the story applies with our situation, they start after the day after tomorrow. But what did Dad mean when he said, They will stop you? Who's they? You don't think he meant us, do you? Maybe, Carter said, or maybe the other gods? I remember in my dream, the red man said Osiris is in prison and the other two are occupied by the younglings. But who was he preferring to as the other two? Then, a loud noise, like multiple things breaking, came from the living room. There was glass on the floor, and out the window, they saw two monsters cornering Philip. They both look like some sort of weird breed between a reptile and a wildcat. The kids watched as the two monsters got ready to pounce on Philip. 
Then, unexpectedly, Philip managed to grab both of them and roll his way over to the side of the pool and over the edge of the building, still holding on to the monsters. Did he just sacrifice himself to protect us? Sadie said, and I thought Amos said something about spells protecting the house. Sadie, Carter said, from what I remember in my dream, the red man said he was going to send Sepropods to tear the place down and capture us. Those things were them. Amos probably didn't realize how strong the red man's magic was, and if I'm right, those things won't be the only things coming here. Bam! One of the Sepropods must have survived the fall and climbed back up. Khufu jumped on it and tried to attack, but the creature flung him off, sending him over the side of the building. Carter grabbed a sword from the wall and threw it at the monster, but its reflexes were too good. Uh, Carter? Sadie asked. Any more ideas? Wait, he said. Didn't Amos say something about Muffin protecting us? I still don't know what to make of that, Sadie answered. Tell your cat to do something, Carter shouted. What? Just do it! Sadie hesitated as she looked down at Muffin. Uh, Muffin, I... I command you to protect us. Then, the last thing they could ever expect just happened. Muffin spun around and blinding light filled the room. When the light died, where Muffin had just been standing, they saw... A woman! She had dark, flawless skin and black hair tied in it back in a tight bun. For some reason, she was wearing what appeared to be a leopard-patterned bodysuit and carried a dagger in each hand. She was kind of pretty, in a cat-like sort of way. Well, it's about time, the woman said. Then she turned to the monster, and the kids watched as she sliced and diced away like a crazy person. Then, the woman stepped back, and the creature turned to dust. So good to be back in human form, she said. Uh, who the bloody heck are you? Sadie asked, shockingly. Oh, I think Carter knows that answer, she said. You're bossed, Carter answered. The bossed. Yes, Carter, the woman confirmed. I am Boss, the Queen of Cats. Now, I suggest we get moving before more enemies arrive, she continued. And Carter, you might want to bring that sword. I have a feeling you'll need it again soon enough. And you're especially going to need your father's work bag where we're going. After gathering their stuff, they followed Boss down the fire escape, over the fence, and to the street. She walked over to a sports car, parked on the side of the road, and ripped off the roof with her bare hands. What the heck are you doing? Carter exclaimed. I love the wind in my fur, she said. Plus, we cannot escape on foot, and Amos took his boat with him. We don't even know whose car that is, Carter said. Boom. Behind them, the mansion exploded and was now covered in flames. Carter, we can worry about how to return it later, Sadie called. Now come on! Boss hotwired the car, and they zoomed down the road. On the way, Boss mentioned the obelisk in Central Park, and that Sadie could use it to open a portal for them to escape. We usually try to avoid Manhattan, she said, but now we have no choice now that the house is destroyed. Why can't you just make one? Sadie asked. Aren't you a goddess? Well, I would, but my power on this side of the Duat is limited. I still can't believe this whole time you've been pretending to be my pet, Sadie argued. Honestly, all these years I let you sleep on my head, I fed you treats, and I literally cleaned out your litter box. My job mainly was to keep a close watch on you on your father's behalf, Bast explained. It's the least I could have done after... after your mother's passing... Oh my gosh, Sadie said. That's it, isn't it? Mom and Dad formed some sort of ritual at the Needle, but something went wrong and they released you instead. I promise I will explain everything, Boss said, but right now we have to get to safety. Minutes later, they zoomed down 5th Avenue, turned into 79th Street, going into Central Park. Seconds after driving down into East Drive, they stopped in front of the obelisk. 
All right, Sadie, we better hurry, Boss said. Why is it best for me to do it? Sadie asked. You're the goddess. We cats were never really good with portals, Bast answered. We usually just serve as protectors. Just control your emotions. Remember, panic or fear can kill a spell. We must hurry. We don't know how long Set's other forces will catch up to us. Isn't there a way to summon the other four gods that Dad released? Carter asked. Osiris, Horus, Isis, the other one? Maybe they can help. They're the good guys, right? That's a good question, Carter. Bast answered, but the presence of gods are usually what you might call complicated. As for whether the gods are good or evil may not be the best way to think of them. As a magician, you think about chaos and order. After all, those are the two forces that control the universe. Uh, what? Most gods are about order, while Set is about chaos. Then... A stray cat appeared next to them and meowed something that Boss didn't like. An enemy is close, Boss said. They're here in the park. Who? Carter asked. How close? Bam. From behind the bushes, out popped a half-woman, half-scorpion creature. Carter knew exactly who this was. Sir Cat, the Queen of Scorpions. From behind her came a swarm of regular-sized scorpions. Seriously? Sadie asked. A scorpion queen? Boss ordered the kids to run, and then she started glowing green and rose up into the air. She was encased in a tall glowing body made of green light, a cat-headed avatar. Get to the Metropolitan Museum, she shouted. You can use the Temple of Dindur to make a portal there. Come on, Sadie, Carter demanded. But we got to slave her, Sadie begged. But Carter tugged her along anyway, as the cat goddess went one-on-one -on -one with the scorpion queen. Lucky for them, the museum was just across the street. Not to mention the place was conveniently open, despite the fact that it was Christmas. As soon as they dashed inside, at least one or two security guards noticed them and, and chased them. They probably caught them rushing in without getting tickets, or they were questioning Carter's sword, or probably both. By dumb luck, they shook them off their tail just before they made it to the Egyptian wing, but there was no telling how long they, until they caught up. There, they saw the temple. Thankfully, no one else was in the room. Now's our chance, said Carter. Maybe we can do it inside where no one can see. But as they were about to cross the doorway, something caused them to trip and fall. When they picked themselves up, they saw that what tripped them was a staff held by... The same girl from the British Museum? You? Carter cried. Get back! He pointed his sword at her, but she flicked it away with a spell from her wand as fast as lightning. Don't bother embarrassing yourselves any further, she said sternly. Now where is Amos? Carter wasn't sure why he didn't notice at first, but the girl seemed surprisingly beautiful in an intimidating sort of way. She looked kind of like an Egyptian princess, with her eyeliner and flawless caramely skin and beautiful hair, and her eyes seemed like they were sparkling. Because of this, Carter was at a loss for words. He's gone, Sadie said, and might I ask who you are? I am Zia Rashid, the girl said, and right now it is my job to un unfortunately to save your miserable lives. She pointed her staff at the arch across from them, and a glowing circle of sand appeared out of thin air. How did you do that so quickly? Sadie asked. Years of practice, Zia said. Also, portals can only be open at certain times. Midnight, midday, sunset, sunrise, eclipses, planet alignments, a certain god's birthday, etc. Lucky for us, it's midday now. Why should we even trust you? Sadie asked. You stalked us around London, and as I recall, your boss or whatever wanted us dead. Yes, that might have been easier, said Zia. But recently my superiors believe you are innocent. Also, we cannot afford to let you fall into the hands of the Red Lord. So unless you want to take your chances with the police alone again, and eventually give the Red Lord time to catch up, I suggest that you come with me. The two siblings took one look at each other, and together, they followed the mysterious girl through the portal.